Welcome to Perfectionists Anonymous, a podcast channel dedicated to unraveling the myth of perfectionist living. I'm your host, Caitlin, and I'm a recovering perfectionist. I invite you to sit down, relax, and hang out with me, your supportive friend, who knows how difficult perfectionism can be and who wants to find a better way. Thank you for joining me today. Greetings, fellow perfectionists. I hope you are all doing well. Today's episode is a reflection of how I've been feeling this past week. I feel exhausted. I feel overwhelmed. I feel like I have so much to do and so little time, and everyone has so many expectations, and I just want a break. Thankfully, a break from work is coming up for me soon, but the wait is difficult. In fact, sometimes it feels excruciating. Having to wait for a relief from pressure and overwhelm is daunting. Staying motivated at work is extremely difficult. Being as productive as I usually am feels impossible. And managing my emotions is more difficult than ever. Everything feels like a slog. I also know I'm not the only one who feels this way at times. I know many of you out there are also feeling exhausted. I know many of you are feeling like you're constantly behind, like there aren't enough hours in the day, like you have to sacrifice so much, and like you are just fully spent. You're running on empty, and you don't know what to do. And that's always where my brain goes when I feel this way. What do I do? I know I'm feeling exhausted and overwhelmed. How do I fix it? And then I do this fun little mind trick where I feel bad for feeling bad in the first place. Like a more giving and loving person would be able to care for everyone around them without getting tired. They would do it with grace. Or a more motivated and focused person would be able to get through their work even when they feel tired. They would persevere unlike you. So now I feel exhausted and overwhelmed, and I also make myself feel guilty for feeling exhausted and overwhelmed. Thanks, brain. That's really helpful. You know what doesn't help exhaustion and overwhelm? Shaming yourself for your exhaustion and overwhelm. And when I feel the guilt and shame spiral for feeling exhausted, my brain's next step is to try and find a solution as quickly as possible so that I can work my way out of feeling exhausted, so then I don't have to feel guilty. I try to reach into my toolbox and find the right strategy to get me out of my funk. I try to reframe all my negative thoughts into positive ones. I try to drill sergeant my way out of feeling tired. I try to compare myself to other people and tell myself that other people have it harder. So why are you being so whiny? There's that perfectionistic inner critic swooping in and trying to make everything better. Fix everything. Make everything perfect. Perfect people don't feel tired. Perfect people don't get overwhelmed by the stresses of life. Perfect people are Zen gods and goddesses who take all of life's problems with ease and meet adversity with their head held high and a 100% success rate. To which I say, (laughs) nope. That's how a perfectionistic brain likes to lie. But as a recovering perfectionist, there's clearly so much to question. The answer to exhaustion and overwhelm is not to obsessively search for a strategy to make it go away. The answer isn't to guilt or shame yourself for feeling that way in the first place. The answer isn't to read all the books, listen to all the podcasts, and do all the meditations until you figure out what you're doing wrong. The answer is simple. Stop doing. Stop fixing, stop shaming, stop trying, 
rest. Rest for the sake of rest and not for the purpose of getting out of your funk so you can be quote unquote better again. Rest because it's what you need right now and what you deserve. Your body is clearly signaling it to you and it's okay to listen. Here's what I've started to learn as a recovering perfectionist. When perfectionists realize that perfectionism isn't actually serving them and is making their life more difficult, they often turn to wellness, self-love, and self-help resources, and they consume them voraciously. They think they're doing this to be kind to themselves, which in theory is true, but perfectionism is clever and sneaky. Because a perfectionist brain takes all these new strategies and uses them antagonistically with the faulty belief that if you research enough and use your strategies enough, then you will somehow finally be able to transcend humanity and never again be susceptible to things like exhaustion and overwhelm. If you were just using the strategies right, then you wouldn't be so tired right now. So really, it's just another sneaky way of doing. A meditation in theory could be a great mindfulness practice to help you in moments of exhaustion, but not if your brain's secret intention is to get you out of the exhaustion as quickly as possible and ignore the negative feelings of overwhelm that you know you're actually feeling. So today, I want to share a few of the ways that I'm not doing things. I am not an expert, and I am not good at this, so really this episode is as much for me as it is for all of the people out there that I know are like me and also struggling. My brain's secret intention is still to do things for a purpose. I can tell because there's a buzzing resistance in my brain whenever I think about trying something. A teeny little voice that is like, Yes, take a relaxing bath for the secret purpose of rejuvenating yourself, so then you won't be exhausted and lazy anymore because good people aren't exhausted and therefore lazy. Honestly, the best I can do right now is to try and tell my brain that it's okay to feel exhausted, and that even if I stayed exhausted forever, that would be okay too. Because exhaustion is normal, it's human, it's something we all need to feel from time to time, and no matter how many strategies I learn, it's always going to come up one way or another. And that's okay. So, what am I trying to not do? Here are five things. One, I'm taking a little pause from my self-help books and podcasts and social media accounts. I consume hours of podcast audio every week related to body acceptance, food acceptance, thought reframing, relationship work, feminism, social justice, mindset work, and more. This is kind of a sneaky way to keep me always doing something because even if I'm just taking a shower and getting ready for work, I'm trying to listen and learn. Obviously, I think self-help podcasts are great. Otherwise, I wouldn't be making this one that you're literally listening to right now. At the same time, when I'm exhausted, my brain doesn't need to be learning. So, instead of automatically turning my Spotify to my self-help podcasts or my radio to the news, I'm giving myself permission to take a break for a few days. I'm just going to listen to Christmas music and Taylor Swift and nostalgic Disney Channel music because my brain needs something that doesn't require more effort right now. It needs rest. Two, I'm going on short walks for the sake of going on walks. Usually walking is one of my favorite forms of movement, something that I do for overall wellness that I know is good for my body. Usually, I have a purpose to it. It's a form of movement that keeps my body feeling strong and flexible. At the same time, when I'm exhausted, a walk can simply be a walk. It's an opportunity to be alone, to escape from the pressures. I bring my phone with me, but only for safety. I keep it on silent, in my pocket, 
and don't look at it. My walk doesn't need to be a certain length. It doesn't need to be of a certain level of strenuous. It's just a walk for the sake of walking, for the sake of escaping for even a moment. Three, take a nap. When I feel exhausted and overwhelmed, I sometimes trick myself into thinking that I don't have time for a nap or that a nap would be counterproductive. But napping is such a great way to do nothing. You don't have to actually fall asleep. Your nap doesn't have to be a certain length. Your nap doesn't have to have any parameters. It's literally just time that you've set aside to stop doing for a moment. I personally try not to listen to anything or watch anything. I just try to lay there. If it's boring, then you're probably doing it right. Perfectionist brains think boring is a bad thing, but it usually just means that you're actually stopping, even for just a second. Four, take a bath. There is a reason this comes up so often as a self-care activity. It's actually a beautiful way to stop doing, especially because it's really easy to make a bath a really spa-like experience. Fill it with warm water, use bubble bath or a bath bomb, light a candle, turn off the lights, and turn on some meditative music. Bam, you have a spa. Just like with napping, I try not to watch anything or have any motivations or parameters. Just laying in the water and stopping for a second is enough. And just like walking, this is a bath just for the sake of a bath. It's not about getting clean, and it's not about rejuvenating to magically dissolve exhaustion. It's just about laying in the water, breathing, and not doing. Five, take at least one responsibility off your plate and give yourself unconditional permission to do so, no matter how big or small. Were you planning on making dinner tonight? Order something delicious instead. Do you have a chore hanging over your head? Put it off until tomorrow or ask someone else in your household to do it for you. Planning on reading tonight? Go to bed early instead. Sometimes it feels like there is no possible way to take something off our to-do lists, but really, there almost always is. There is some small little decision, some little task, some responsibility that you can relinquish for a time or hand off to somebody else, and it honestly can feel so good to just have one less thing to worry about, no matter how small. I still feel exhausted, and I'm going to do a couple of these things tonight and still probably feel exhausted. I'm probably going to feel exhausted even through my winter break from work because of all the social obligations that I have coming up, most of which I am so excited for because I love my family and friends and Christmas is my favorite time of year, and I'll probably still be exhausted. Old perfectionist me would just keep fighting it, trying to fix it and make it go away. Recovering perfectionist me is trying to just allow it, stop doing so much, and know that eventually I won't be exhausted. This isn't permanent. It's pretty sucky right now, but that's okay. If it wasn't for these moments of exhaustion, then the moments of joyful energy wouldn't be nearly as meaningful. We aren't bad, lazy people for feeling exhausted. We aren't selfish for taking time for ourselves when we need it. We aren't greedy for stepping back from responsibilities for a moment just because we need it and for no other reason. We are good, kind, caring people with high standards and a desire to see the best in things. We care and give so much, in fact, that sometimes our care gets depleted because we give it all. And those who give it all are those who most need permission to stop doing. So here it is, fellow perfectionists. This episode is your permission.
Thank you for listening today, fellow perfectionists. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more perfectionism-related content and to help the channel grow. If you are listening on a podcast app, please feel free to leave a review and give the podcast a follow. If these episodes are resonating with you and you think they might resonate with others, please feel free to share it as well. Until next time, fellow perfectionists.